We're looking at section 3.9 today, derivatives of exponential and logarithmic functions. Uh, the first one we have is the derivative of e to the x. And we use the formal definition of derivative to find the derivative. So we have the limit as x approaches 0. Uh, e to the x plus h minus e to the x over h. Now you can split that up uh, into multiplication and then factor out the e to the x, and you have e to the h minus 1 over h. Now, earlier in the sections in the book, as a matter of fact, chapter 1, uh, if we had done that section, we were shown that this actually goes to 1, so you're just going to have to take my word for it. What we need to know from this section is that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So the derivative of uh, the function is itself. Now what this says down below is you have to take, you got to remember the chain rule. For example, the first example, uh, the derivative dy dx equals e to the x plus x squared. Yes, it's its own derivative, but then we have to take it times the derivative of x plus x squared or, or the derivative of the inside function. So we have 1 plus 2x and that is the answer right there. Next is the derivative of a to the x. What about an exponential function with a base other than e? We will assume that the base is positive and different from 1 since negative numbers to arbitrary real powers are not always real numbers and y equals 1 to the x is a constant function. You know, 1 squared is 1, 1 to the third is 1, 1 to the fourth is 1, and so on. If a is greater than 1, as a does not equal a is greater than 0 and a does not equal 1, uh, we can use the properties of logarithms to write a to the x in terms of e to the x. The formula for doing so is a to the x is equal to e raised to the x natural log of a. And look, you remember the power rule for um, logs. You can bring that up as a to the x. And then e raised to the natural log, that uh, undoes itself. And all you're left with is a to the x. So these two, in fact, equal each other. We can then find the derivative of a to the x with the chain rule. So the derivative of a to the x equals the derivative of what we set it equal to which is equal, remember the derivative of e to the x is itself, so the derivative is itself, but then times the derivative of x natural log of a, and natural log of a, remember, is a constant. So it's like having the derivative of just 2x, it's just 2. So the derivative of the inside is just natural log of a, and so there we have the derivative of a to the x. So what you need to know is really uh, the derivative of a to the x is a to the x natural log of a and what this is saying is don't forget the derivative of the inside. So here's a more specific example of what we're talking about. At what point on the graph of the function does the tangent line have slope 21? So we need dy dx equals the derivative of 2 to the t is 2 to the t times the natural log of 2 and we're just going to set that equal to 21. So 21 equals 2t times the natural log of 2. Uh, we divide by the natural log of 2. So 2 to the t equals 21 over natural log of 2. And then we'll have to take the natural log of both sides. So t natural log of 2 equals natural log of all of this, 21 over natural log of 2 and then finally divide by natural log of 2. So it's all of this divided by the natural log of 2. And if you uh, do this in your calculator, you get a value of 4.921. 4.921. Now that's the t. We need t comma y. We have the t, 4.921. And if you plug this back into the original function, this back in for t, you get 27.297, 27.297, and there's the point. Uh, the bottom line is, this was the important part as far as this section is concerned. There's the derivative of 2 raised to the t. Next is the derivative of the natural log of x. Now that we know the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, it is relatively easy to find the derivative of its inverse function natural log of x. So if we set y just equal to natural log, we can raise both sides uh, to the e power, or e to, the, to both sides, that is. So uh, these two cancel each other out, and you just get x. So the derivative of e to the y is e to the y, and uh, you know dy dx, and the derivative of x is 1. 
So we end up with dy dx being 1 over e to the y. But right here it says e to the y is x. So the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Now we also have to consider that there could, this could be more than x and we'd have to use the chain rule of course. And that's what this says, use the chain rule. Oh, here's an example, a line with slope m passing through the origin and its tangent to the graph of y equals natural log of x. What is the value of m? All right, so we have this function right here, y equals the natural log of x. And we have a tangent line, a slope with m, a line with slope m passes through the origin and is tangent to the graph of this. So it passes through that point. Now here's the graph of the natural log of x, something like that. And we have a tangent line passing through the origin and tangent to natural log of x. This tangent line has a slope that they say is m. And the slope of the tangent line, well, if we take the derivative of this equation, the slope of the tangent line anywhere is equal to 1 over x, the derivative of the natural log of x. Now, there's a point here that is some x comma natural log of x uh, that is on the line and the tangent line, of course. And we have this other point, 0, 0. Well, uh, if m, that's equal to m right here, the slope of the tangent line, then m must equal the natural log of x minus 0 over x minus 0. I mean, that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we know that that's equal to 1 over x. So the natural log of x over x needs to be equal to 1 over x. Well, now all we need to know is how does natural log of x equal 1? Well, you have e to the 1 equals x. So we know what the x value is for um, the point. Uh, and then the slope is, uh, is 1 over x. So the slope ends up being 1 over e. Derivative of log base a of x. To find the derivative of log base a of x for an arbitrary base, we use the change of base formula of logarithms to express log base a of x in terms of natural logs as follows. Log base a of x can be written as log of x over natural log of a. So to take the derivative of log, you can turn it into two natural logs. Well, this can be split up because this is a constant. This is a natural log of some value. So it's 1 over natural log of a times the derivative of just natural log, which we know to be 1 over x. So the derivative, d dx, here's what you really need to know, of log base a of x equals 1 over x times the natural log of a. Example, going the long way with the chain rule. We have the deriv we want to find the derivative of log base a of a of sine of x. And we want to do this the long way. So we want a, the derivative of log. The derivative of log, dy dx, equals 1 over a sine x times the derivative of that a, really. Or not derivative, but natural log of that. And then that is uh, the outside function. And now we have to multiply times the derivative of the inside function, which is times a to the sine of x times the natural log of a times the natural log of base uh, the base and then times the the uh, derivative of the inside function uh, of sine of x which is cosine of x so what happens is the natural log of a's cancel out a to the sine x cancels out and the final answer for this is the cosine of x on example six we want to find uh, the domain of the derivative if f of x equals the natural log of x minus 3, well, this moves the graph 3 to the right. That's the transformation. So I'm going to take the, the graph of natural log, which we know to be something like that. It passes through the point 1, 0. We have to move all of this over 3 units. So here's 1, 2, 3 units. So this asymptote, this vertical asymptote, is now moved over to 3 right here. And the graph is going to pass through 4. So there's the new graph. So the domain of this graph is 3 to infinity. The derivative of the natural log is 1 over x minus 3, and then times the derivative of the inside, which is just 1. 
So this is f prime of x. And normally this function, the only problem that we would have would be 3. You could plug in negative values to this. But derivatives don't exist where the original function doesn't exist. So the domain for this is also 3 to infinity. Here are some practice problems. Uh, the derivative of this one is just 3e to the x. The derivative of the x is itself. This one is uh, first times derivative of second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And we can actually take an e to the x out of this. e to the x, x to the third plus 3x squared. The derivative of 5 to the x is 5 to the x times the natural log of 5. The derivative of the natural log of 1 over x squared would be 1 over 1 over x squared times the derivative of, this is really x to the negative 2, times the derivative of the inside, which would be negative 2x to the negative 3. So we can definitely simplify this. We can multiply the top and bottom by x squared just on this fraction. And that's really x squared times negative 2 over x to the third. And so two of these x's cancel out, and the final answer is negative 2 over x. There's the derivative. On logs, the derivative is 1 over x to the third times the natural log of 4. But then times the derivative of the inside, times 3x squared. Now that can reduce. Uh, the x squareds will cancel out. So we have 3 over x natural log of 4. And on the last one, we're going to have to use the product rule. First times derivative of second, derivative of natural log is 1 over x, plus second times derivative of first, and then minus 1. So we have 1 plus natural log of x minus 1. So this ends up being the natural log of x.